Hello, welcome to this lesson of Mastering Java. Lesson number 11, here we're going to continue working with strings. We're going to study the method associated with the string object called CompareTo. Now we've covered several uh, methods that apply to strings that are all very, very useful. And this is just another one of those methods that you'll be using over and over again. Basically, in the previous lesson, we have compared two strings for the purpose of seeing if they're equal to one another, and that's very useful. But sometimes you might want to look at two strings and figure out which one would come before the other in the dictionary. In other words, you might want to figure out what is the proper ordering of the two strings in terms of alphabetical order. Um, and now you could write your own subroutine to do this. You could you know, write a subroutine to go through and compare the letters and figure out what would come before what in the dictionary. But we already have that in the um, method called compare to. It's attempting to tell you what would come before the uh, what would come first in the dictionary. So let's create a string and I'll call it string one and I'll call it um, apples, right? Like this, apples. And let me create a string two and I'll call this apricots, right? And then I'll call string three insect just some random words now these um, do not have to be single words they could be they could be multiple things so apples are my favorite fruit apricots are delicious insects are gross so in other words these strings uh, I'm thinking of it in terms of alphabetizing words but really it doesn't matter it's going to go see character by character through the entire thing that you have listed there and it, it's going to try to figure out what would come first in a dictionary so to get the show on the road let's go figure out how to do this so let's go ahead and do uh, system dot out dot print ln and first let's just print out string one all right and then dot out dot print ln let's go ahead and print out string two let's do a comparison between string one and string two so in order to make that easy to see when we print it out we're going to print both strings to the screen then on the next line what I would like to do is system dot out dot print ln and inside here let's put some text which let, let's do it this way um, does string one come first actually let's do it a different way let me take this off let's just jump right into the if statement if what we need to do is access this compare to function so what we have is str1 notice we access the methods associated with this object by hitting the period so we put string one here and we hit a period to access the methods associated with with uh, the string object and you can scan down here and get to where you're trying to go but sometimes it's better just to start typing compare and you can see we have two methods that are very similar compare to and we have compare to ignore case so you use the first one if if um, if you're just trying to uh, make an exact comparison uh, including the case the uppercase or lowercase and you would use the other one if you don't care about the case but for right now let's just go ahead and select this one um, and so we're going to do a comparison to, since we have all lowercase here anyway, we're going to comparison to, and we have to select another string. So let's select string two, right? And so what we're doing here, when you put something like this in the code, what you're asking Java to do is you're asking it to say, go and look at string one and compare it to string two. Now, whenever that method kicks off, it can return there. It's going to return a value back. It's either going to return a negative number back a positive number back or zero back. Now it doesn't actually matter what value positive or negative comes back. It just matters if it's positive or negative. So if when we do this, we get a number greater than zero, then this is a single line if I'll do system.out.println and inside of here, I will say um, string, string one comes before string two, right? And I'll go down below here and then I'll do another if. If string one compare to string two is greater than zero, is actually less than zero, that's the other case. Then I'll do system.out.println 
string one comes um, actually I have this a little bit backwards this will be coming before string two this will be coming after uh, it's very easy to figure out as you read it here because what's going on here is when you compare string one to string two if you get a positive number then it means that string one comes after in other words if you get greater than zero it means that the first thing listed here is coming after this guy here if you get a negative number then it means this one here is coming before this one so you can easily remember what goes here and then there's only one final case string one compare uh, to string two, and that would be if it's equal to zero. Okay, and then in that case, you do system dot out dot print ln string one equals or is equal to string two, and we'll just drop that there and we'll put a semicolon at the end. Now you might look at this and ask why is this underlined? That's because we're doing all of the stuff inside of an if statement. And as you remember, when we do if statements, when we're doing comparisons, we need a double equal here. So, you know, every time you write code, you make little mistakes like that. You look for the underline, see if you can figure out what it's asking you and say, well, I, gee, I just missed that. So basically, if we're trying to compare string one with string two, there's three possible cases. Either you're going to get an answer greater than zero, you're going to get an answer less than zero, and it doesn't matter what the number is, it just matters if it's positive or negative, or it'll be equal to zero. And those three cases are going to cover the, the possibilities there. So let me hit save and let me hit run, and it'll say, here's the first string, here's the second string, and it'll say string one comes before string two. And that comes about because the A's are the same, but then as it goes to the P in apple and the R in apricot, it'll determine that string one alphabetically would come before string two in the dictionary. So it doesn't really matter how many characters are in the string. It's simply looking character by character to figure out, um, you know, what, um, you know, what, what's going on there. So we can do exactly the same thing and do a comparison between, for instance, string one uh, and string three, or we can flip it around and do string three compared to string one. So let's do that real quick. And to speed that process up a little bit, what we can do is we can just copy all three of these because the cases will be the same. I'm going to hit copy here. I'll do system.out.println like this. It'll give me a blank line. And let me go and hit control paste here. This is just dumping this back in. Now if I'm going to do a comparison of string three comparing to, well, let's do string three compared to string two. Let's make it easy. And then I'll change this to string three. And basically we're finished. Now we're comparing string three to string two. And if that gives me an answer greater than zero, then it means string three um, is going to come after string two. And if I get a negative answer, it'll mean it comes before string two. And if I get an uh, exactly zero, it'll tell me that they're exactly equal to one another. So if I go ahead and hit run there, then it'll tell me string three comes after string two. Now I didn't print all of the strings out, I guess that, that would have been useful. Um, actually, let me do that real quick. Let me just take this. I'll just take it, copy that guy. And then after the blank line, I will insert this and we'll paste out. Let's go ahead and compare string three to string two. So we'll print both of those strings on the screen. Let me hit run one more time. Here is string number three. Here is string number two. String three comes after string two. Now don't forget the way we have it set up here, this guy, the top string here, this is string three, and this one down here is actually string two. So it's telling us exactly the right thing. String three, this one here, does come after string two in the dictionary because of the alphabetical nature of that. And if you wanted to just check and see an example of when they're equal to one another, I can change this to apricots. <laughs> actually, I misspelled apricots, arpricots. Uh, so let's change this just to be, just to be clear. So apricots apricots are delicious okay and now we're comparing string three to string two and let's see what happens at the end here string three is equal to string two because these guys are both exactly equivalent so you can actually use this situation in place of the equals method if you wanted to um, basically it depends on what you're trying to do if you're really just trying to figure out if two things are equal like if you're looking something up in the dictionary then using the equals method is probably better if you're looking to see if some, something is alphabetically before or after then you probably want to use this method here and again there are three cases you get a positive answer get a negative answer and get an equal answer 
Uh, many cases when you would have lots of records and you need to alphabetize them, this is going to be the core of that type of thing. Now follow me on to the exercises. We'll give you a little extra practice with this yourself and you can play with it and get some understanding of it and add it to your toolbox because you know this is the kind of thing where you don't know ahead of time that you're going to need it but then you'll be working on a project. Suddenly you'll need to alphabetize something and if you know this exists, it will save you a ton of time.